we go further, let's have a look at the surgical anatomy of the lens. The lens is spherical at birth and it is biconvex by the time we become adults. It's transparent, avascular, non-innervated and an encapsulated structure. There are many MCQs that can come as regards the numerical values that are associated with the dimensions of the lens. So the power of the lens is about 15 to 18 diopters. The radius of curvature of the anterior lens surface is 10 microns and that of the posterior surface is about 6 microns. The central part of the anterior surface of the lens is called the anterior pole while the central part of the posterior surface is called as the posterior pole. Right in the center where the anterior and posterior pole meets, we have the equator of the lens. Now equatorial diameter at birth is about 6.5 millimeters and by the second decade it is about 9 millimeters. The anterior posterior diameter refers to the distance between the anterior and the posterior pole at birth this is about 3.5 millimeters and it increases by 0.02 millimeters each year the refractive indices are different for different parts of the lens if we consider the lens in total it's about 1.39 the cortex has a little lesser refractive index as compared to the nucleus and it is 1.38 by virtue of being densely packed, the nucleus has a higher refractive index of about 1.42. Now, let's have a look at the location of the lens. The lens lies between the posterior surface of iris and the vitreous in a saucer-shaped depression which is called as the patellar fossa. The posterior surface of the lens is in contact with vitreous and is attached to a circular area which is called as by virtue of a ligament which is called as a Vigors ligament. Now this ligament is not a true ligament and as the age progresses the attachment of Vigors ligament it reduces. There is a potential space between the posterior lens capsule and the Vigors ligament and it is called as the Berger space. The strength of vigus ligament, as I mentioned, decreases with age and there is also a artery which is called as the hyaloid artery which is attached from, uh, from the time of gestation till 8 months of gestation at the central part of posterior surface of lens and is called as the hyaloid artery and it passes through the Clockett's canal. Now, after 8 months of gestation, both the Clockett's canal and the hyaloid artery, they disappear. Sometimes we may have a remnant of the hyaloid artery in the form of a mittened off dot at the posterior part of the lens. Coming to the lens zonules. Now the lens is suspended by these zonules which are attached 360 degrees at the equator of the lens. They attach to the lens uh, capsule 2 mm anterior and a mm posterior to the equator. They arise from the ciliary epithelium from the pars plana region as well as from the valleys between the ciliary processes. Now these lens zonules are non-elastic and they are made up of a protein which is called as fibrillin. This too can come as an MCQ question. If there is defective fibrillin, that means that the zonules are likely to be high and this has been seen in Marfan syndrome. There is a mutation on chromosome 15 which results in formation of defective fibrillin and hence these patients are likely to have ectopia lentis. Ectopia lentis means that the lens gets subluxated in an Indian abnormal position which can vary as per the disease, right? So, ectopia lentis is seen in Marfan's, the chromosome involved is 15 and the protein is fibrillin. So, either of these can come as a MCQ question. Let's have a look at the histopathology of the lens. The lens has a capsule. Although the lens capsule has no elastic tissue, it is highly elastic in nature because of the presence of lamellar or fibrillar arrangements of the lens fibers. The lens capsule is thickest near the equator and thinnest at the posterior pole. 
It's considered to be the thickest basement membrane of the body and is composed of type 4 collagen. The thickness of the anterior lens capsule increases with age whereas the thickness of the posterior lens capsule either remains as such or may change slightly and may become a little less. So the fact regarding the thickest membrane and being composed of type 4 collagen can come as multiple choice questions. The lens epithelium there is only anterior lens epithelium and there is no posterior lens epithelium in adults. The anterior lens epithelium has cuboidal cells while the epithelial cells at the equator, they are columnar and are known as the E cells. The lens fibers which are there in the center that is in the nucleus are metabolically inactive while the ones in the cortex are metabolically active. Now before birth, posterior epithelium is present and it serves the purpose of filling the central cavity of the lens vesicle. The A cells are actively involved in the metabolism of the uh, lens while E cells have the capability of mitosis and hence they actively divide to form new cell fibers which then migrate posteriorly and then they are impacted into the nucleus. This happens throughout life, so the part of the eye that keeps on growing throughout life is the lens. The nucleus per se is not just one piece, it has several layers. The embryonic nucleus is formed from 1 to 3 months of gestation. Then we have the fetal nucleus which is from the 3rd month of gestation till birth. The infantile nucleus exists from birth till puberty and after that we have the adult nucleus. So the embryonic nucleus is the deepest structure which is very closely impacted. The oldest fibers are therefore seen in the embryonic nucleus and the youngest fibers are there in the cortex. So new cells, uh, new lens fibers are formed from the equator and therefore are there in the cortex. As they become older, they go and get impacted and whatever we see on the surface is the newer version of the lens fibers. Then we come to lens sutures. Now one lens fiber meets the other lens fiber. So the lens fibers from the anterior part of the lens meet the lens fibers from the posterior part. The place where they meet each other is called as a suture. Anteriorly this suture is erect Y shaped while when the fibers turn back, they form an inverted Y-shaped suture. These sutures are present in all nuclei except embryonic nucleus. So you can have a MCQ question that in which lens nucleus are the sutures absent and the answer is embryonic nucleus. Let's have a look at the biochemistry of the lens. The lens is actually made up of 65% water and 30% proteins. The lens proteins can be water soluble or water insoluble. The water soluble proteins include alpha crystallins, beta crystallins and gamma crystallins. Beta crystallins form about 50 to 55% of lens proteins. The alpha crystallins, they are also known as heat shock proteins and they are the largest crystalline proteins. If there is any misfolding in the proteins of the lens, the alpha proteins they go and they stabilize this uh, injury and it prevents the denaturation of proteins. The gamma crystallins are least in number and smallest in size. When we talk about water insoluble proteins, we have two forms, urea soluble proteins and urea insoluble ones. The urea soluble proteins are very contributory towards the cytoskeletal proteins and therefore the structural anatomy of the lens. They include vimentin, phacanin and phylensin. While the urea insoluble ones include MIP26 or the major intrinsic protein 26 which is also known as aquaporin 0. Now when we use the word aquaporin it means that we are talking about a water channel. So therefore, this protein is contributory towards keeping the water out of the lens and giving it a transparent appearance. 